Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein is reportedly planning to flee the country for France, taking a cue from his longtime friend, director, and fugitive child rapist Roman Polanski. Weinstein's friends in the movie business and in progressive politics pretend to be stunned and aghast at all of this. This isn't the Harvey Weinstein we knew, they claim, in anguished interviews arranged by their publicists. We're appalled. Right. Except it's exactly the Harvey Weinstein they knew, the same one that Seth MacFarlane joked about at the Academy Award nominee announcements. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> When they mock your lechery from the stage of one of the highest rated shows on television, it's not a secret. And indeed it wasn't. McFarlane now says he heard about Weinstein's harassment from one of his many victims at the time. McFarlane knew. So did everyone else. They're all lying about it. Who specifically is lying? Here's a partial list. Pretty much every A-list actor who once worked for Harvey Weinstein. Most of them are now saying how shocked they are. Please. They all knew. A couple of them called the New York Times in 2004 on Weinstein's behalf to stop an expose on his sexual harassment. They didn't know the truth then? Come on, of course they did. That's why they killed the story. NBC News. They had this story months ago, but they didn't run it. Ronan Farrow, a former MSNBC anchor, originally did the investigation for NBC News, but they refused to air it. So he took it to The New Yorker magazine, which published the blockbuster yesterday. NBC News president Noah Oppenheim now says Farrow just didn't have it nailed down. That's absurd. Farrow had videotaped testimony from eight separate women, according to the Daily Beast, plus the New York Police Department audio tape of Harvey Weinstein confessing. If that's not a solid news story, nothing is. And yet NBC cravenly caved to pressure and killed the piece. They ought to be ashamed. Keep in mind, this is the same company that secretly gave the Billy Bush Access Hollywood tape to the Washington Post during the last campaign, almost a year ago. They're a political shop, not a news organization. They ought to stop pretending otherwise. And then there's Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance. He clearly had enough evidence years ago to prosecute Harvey Weinstein for groping a model, including that videotape confession. Instead, he let Weinstein go. Shortly after, Harvey Weinstein's lawyer sent Cy Vance a $10,000 donation. Coincidence? Right. And what about Tina Brown? In the late 1990s, Brown left the New Yorker magazine to partner with Weinstein on a magazine called Talk. Brown conceded yesterday there were whispers about Weinstein's behavior. She admits she saw Weinstein routinely give favorable treatment to beautiful women he was cultivating. She saw him quash negative articles about himself by leaking information about other stars. Yet despite all of that, Brown tells us, nobody really knew for sure. Oh, come on. I worked for Talk Magazine at the time. Trust me, Tina Brown knew. She was Weinstein's business partner for two years and a famously perceptive person. And yet until now, she's never mentioned any of it. And it's not like she hasn't had the chance. For the past seven years, Tina Brown has run the Women in the World Summit, which brings together socially conscious feminists like Hillary Clinton and Meryl Streep to discuss the challenges women face worldwide. A single word from Brown at any of these conferences might have saved a lot of women a lot of pain at the hands of Harvey Weinstein. But Tina Brown didn't say a word, nor did Hillary Clinton nor Meryl Streep, both longtime friends of Harvey Weinstein's. We could go on and on. Hollywood protected and legitimized Harvey Weinstein with the active help of Democratic Party luminaries like Barack and Michelle Obama. But Weinstein isn't the only predator who has found a welcome home in the movie business. In 1988, film director Victor Salva molested a 12-year-old boy who was acting in a film he was working on. We can be sure this happened because Salva videotaped the crime. Salva was charged, convicted, and served time in prison. Then he went back to work in Hollywood. Walt Disney Studios, the same company that gave you The Lion King and Frozen, hired Salva to direct the film Powder in 1995. Since then, Salva has made several other movies, including the Jeepers Creepers horror franchise, He's also a member in good standing of the Directors Guild of America, whose top officers include left-wing directors John Favreau and Ron Howard. By all accounts, nobody in the movie business judges him. And they don't. Hollywood is corrupt. The powerful prey upon the weak, and nobody is held accountable. That's the lesson of the Harvey Weinstein saga. It's a world the police don't touch. It's a world that's unwilling to police itself. 
It's far past time for the federal government to step in here to protect the vulnerable, and there are many of them. Weinstein and his enablers intimidated the New York Times, NBC News, the Manhattan District Attorney. They're unlikely to be as effective with the Justice Department.